I'm going winter camping in the remote Canadian Rockies where temperatures are forecasted to get down to minus 20 degrees and a winter storm might roll in. Normally people need 30, 40, or 50 pounds of gear in order to survive in these conditions, but I'm aiming to travel 10 kilometers and then camp with a pack that has a base weight of only 12 pounds. 12 pounds is what most people need for summer backpacking. So the question is gonna be, will I be warm and comfortable or did I sacrifice too many gear items and will I be cold and miserable on this trip? Over the course of the trip, I'm gonna go over everything that I brought with me in order to stay warm, safe, and sheltered, as well as talk about some of the gear that I would normally bring on a winter camping trip that I left at home. I'm optimistic that I have everything that I need in order to enjoy this trip, but there's always that chance that I forgot something or I didn't plan well enough for the conditions I'm gonna be out in. I did make some pretty drastic cuts to my gear, so hopefully I have everything I need because I love winter camping and it'd be really unfortunate to be cold and miserable out on this trip. We made it to the point on the trail where I knew there was gonna either be good news or bad news. And it's looking like bad news because this is the point where my trail branches off from the main trail and no one's gotten up there, which is unfortunate because I know that this area is kind of difficult to navigate through. And then once you gain elevation, we're gonna gain about 550 meters of elevation gain over the next five kilometers, six kilometers. You get to a lot of scree slopes that you have to traverse and then there's going to be right before the campsite a decent sized scramble so luckily i do have a light pack so that scramble will hopefully be a little bit easier but i know that it could also be quite difficult with the snow and the ice one of the things that i left behind in order to save weight was micro spikes i didn't know whether i need them or not so i left them at home so hopefully the keen boots that i'm wearing have enough traction to get me through those scree slopes and then up that scramble of flagging tape right here which is hopefully a good sign because I know that the spot where the trail gets really spotty is right after this lake here so right now I'm not actually sure where where that flagging tape is is trying to take me I, th I think I think it goes along the lake a little bit more and before cutting up and gaining a ton of elevation but yeah, definitely, definitely no one through here other than a few moose. So we're gonna be heading around the lake here and then up across that scree slope. And then the scramble area is right around there before we kind of plateau over top of that and then get to the campsite. Yeah, it's uh, it's intimidating from the from this angle, getting up, getting up over that rocky cliffy area. I made it to the other side of the lake and I was hoping for some more flagging tape or something to direct me where to go back into the trees, but I haven't seen anything and I think I probably need to just kind of bushwhack until I hit hit a trail of some sort. There is there's a moose moose track here and the moose has been sticking to the trail pretty well so I'll probably just follow this guy and see see if I can hit the trail and hopefully I not have to bushwhack too much. So no trail. So I'm just kind of wandering through the woods and what I'm looking for right now are cut trees. I'm not going to be able to see the trail, but I should be able to see cut logs where I've done some trail maintenance. Okay, flagging tape, it's a good sign. <laughs> Whew. All right, let's see if there's a cut tree somewhere around here or another piece of flagging tape. That wasn't too bad, we're, we're on the trail, you can see it kind of behind me there and then up in front of me. The trail should be pretty clear and to hit that scrambling bit and then once we get up on top of the plateau, I know it kind of disappears, comes and goes a little bit more. So hopefully my, my trail finding luck kind of continues once we get up there.
my pace has slowed down significantly coming up this hill, going through wind slabs, loose rock. Whew, this, is, this is tough. If, if I had a heavier pack, like 30, 40 pounds, I would have turned down because this just wouldn't be safe. Luckily, I'm just kind of on the edge of my capabilities with, with like a pack that weighs just under 15 pounds. But that, that, that was tough. That was really, really tough. And now I have to work my way up through that. The sun's going down, so I'm running out of daylight to get to camp. And it looks like some clouds are rolling in. It feels kind of like a storm. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but from here I gotta traverse across here, go underneath this waterfall, scramble up this, and then go up that little chute right there. Definitely don't wanna be slipping crossing these snow fields here. <laughs> Ooh, this has been tough. Before we hit the crux of this trip, I wanna thank the best store in the world for ultralight gear for sponsoring today's video. That store is Garage Growing Gear. One of my favorite things about Garage Growing Gear is their new gear page. It's constantly being updated with new brands, new products, and I check that page pretty much every week to see what new and exciting gear is coming in stock. Garage Growing Gear is giving small cottage brands a place to showcase their gear. Gear like the Bogler Trowel, the Sulik 46 Pot Gripper, some of my favorite ultralight gear out there, including a bunch of gear from this trip. Go check out all the gear that I'm using on this trip as well as Garage Growing Gear at the links in the video description. And now to see if I'm able to make it through this cliffy section or if I'm gonna have to go with plan B. I made it. There's a lot of times coming up there that I thought I was gonna have to turn around because it was just too sketchy or I was too tired. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty beat. There's no way I was gonna be making it up that with a 30, 40 pound pack. That would've been a guaranteed turnaround. So kind of kind of cool and neat that I was able to make it up here because I brought an ultralight pack. From here, I'm just gonna be kind of following a creek to the campsite. It's gonna be hard to, to follow the trail, but hopefully uh, I just have to pull up the map and, and follow the track and get there no problem. I'm making pretty good time through this forest, even though the trail is really hard to follow and the snow is quite deep. There's a lot more snow up here, but the sun's starting to go down, so I need to book it to camp because one of the things I did not bring was a headlamp. Don't worry, I do have sources of light, but a headlamp makes setting up camp in the dark a whole lot easier. Made it to camp, um, I'm beat. <laughs> that was one of the toughest slogs I've done in a while and I was fighting the sun the entire time, so. It's time to get my tent sleep system all set up before it gets dark, and then I'll probably be cooking dinner while it's dark. I got my camp set up. I have a pretty sweet sleep system I'm excited to share with you guys, but that's gonna have to wait till tomorrow once it's a little bit brighter out. I'll also let you know tomorrow if I slept warm enough, because like I said, it's supposed to get down to minus 20 tonight. There's a wind and I'm using an ultralight sleep system. So usually ultralight means less warmth, less comfort, but I'm, I'm optimistic that I'm gonna be comfortable and warm tonight. Ooh, all right, I am, I'm pooped. I need food, I need water. My dinner tonight is Bushka's Kitchen, which is, which is always nice because it's one of my favorite meals. So nice to have that. I'm definitely dehydrated. I was just, I was just pushing through, so I, I wasn't drinking enough water. So I'm gonna have to really drink a lot of water before bed. My cook kit is very ultralight. I'm not quite sure how the stove's gonna do. It's the uh, Fire Maple Blade 2. It's an old titanium stove, so it's very lightweight. It's also very compact. And it is an inverted canister stove, so I can run it with the canister inverted, which means I can run at very low temperatures, down to minus 40, really, if you have a full a full uh, canister here. But my canister isn't quite full, so I'll probably be okay at minus 20. It's just, this one's not quite as good as something like a Whisper Light or a Wind Pro, so we'll see how it does today. I have the Evernew one liter titanium pot. One liter is about the minimum I think that you need in wintertime if you're gonna be melting snow. I do have running water here, luckily. I'm, that's like well, the one thing today that went right for me is, is having running water. So I'll be uh, using that for water tonight and tomorrow, but let's get this stove going. We'll get out this reflective mat too. These actually make quite a big difference. They reflect the heat 
back up to the stove and uh, that makes them operate quite a bit better. So let's let's uh, get it going. You, you started off with the uh, with the canister upright, and then once it warms up that preheating tube, it doesn't take very long. Then you can invert it. The flame's doing a pretty good job, so I think I think the fire maple stove is going to perform really well right now. I'm going to track the temperature overnight tonight using my thermo drop thermometer. You can grab that at Garage Run Gear. It's just a little thermometer that shows you the min and the max temperature over a 24-hour period. So I'm going to set that up outside my tent tonight, and we'll see uh, see how cold it gets. I'll put the lighter back in my jacket so it doesn't freeze. So that's my cook system. Like I said, I'm going to eat my dinner, drink drink some water. And then tomorrow we'll go through all that stuff that I said we're going to go through and, and touch base when I have a little bit more uh, brain functionality. So good night, guys. We'll see you, see you in the morning. I forgot to mention to you guys that I do have illumination. So I have this little Rovi Vaughn headlamp. It clips onto my, my cap. It doesn't work super well if I have a toque on, but when I'm using my, my hiking hat right now, just clip it on and I get really good light. It works really well. A lot more lightweight than a headlamp. So great for an extreme ultralight trip like this. Good morning. Temperatures got down to minus 15 degrees Celsius last night, so warmer than forecasted, which is always nice. I slept toasty warm though. We'll go over and check out my big four in a second here, but yesterday was pretty, pretty crazy. That was some of the gnarliest kind of winter backpacking that I've ever done. Usually I take it a lot more easy. I go less mileage, I go less extreme kind of terrain, but Yesterday, I just kind of wanted to push myself, especially since I was using an ultralight pack, so I knew I was a little bit more nimble and a little bit quicker than if I was using a heavy pack, and it, it pushed my limits. Luckily, I got to camp just before it got dark, but I wasn't able to see any of these amazing views, so this is, this is pretty cool. This is an amazing campsite. The tent that I brought with me on this trip is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Ultimate 4. It's a Dyneema tent without a floor. I don't like having a floor in the wintertime because it just adds weight and then it makes it a lot more difficult to clear off any frost that accumulate on the inside of the tent. The thing that makes the Ultimate special is that it's made with Dyneema composite fabric, which means that it's gonna be a lot more lightweight, especially for how strong it is compared to a tent that's made of nylon or polyester. It is a very expensive tent, so don't think that you have to go out and buy a tent like this for winter camping. I'm just using it because I really wanted to go as lightweight as possible. If you want something a little bit more affordable that's only a little bit more weight, then check out the Black Diamond Megalite. I've been using that tent on a bunch of trips this winter so far, and it's an awesome tent. When I got to camp last night, I cleared out all the snow from the tent pad because it's just kind of fluffy snow and I would have been, just been sitting in it, it would have gotten everywhere. I didn't bring a full shovel. That's one of the things that I sacrificed. Instead of bringing a full aluminum shovel, which would move snow really fast, I brought this lightweight shovel from Snowclaw. It doesn't move snow quite as fast, but it gets the job done and it weighs less than half as much at 173 grams. Let's get into my sleep system because I really enjoyed this sleep system last night. It kept me warm and I was very comfortable. We'll start with the sleeping pad because you guys are probably already eyeing the sleeping pad that I have here and wondering what my thoughts are on it. It's the Nemo Tensor Extreme, but not the same one that I used on and tested on the Glacier. That was a pre-production model, so I sent it back to Nemo. This is a full production version, and I'm impressed with it. The other one that I tested on the Glacier, I, I slept cold on it, even with in subsequent trips where I use it in very kind of mild conditions. I was not sleeping warm on that pad. Whereas this one, I've had it out on a couple of trips already, and in conditions like this where I'm on snow and the temperatures are quite low, I've been sleeping fine. I do think it sleeps slightly colder than the Thermarest Xtherm, but I'm gonna have to do an A-B test. I have that planned for an upcoming trip, so stay tuned. But what makes this better than the Xtherm is that it's more comfortable. I was able to sleep a lot better on this without my arms falling asleep, which made my sleep last night whole lot better because when I'm sleeping on the Xtherm, I, I, I just don't get super comfortable sleep. So it's nice to have a winter option that allows me to sleep comfortably. For my pillow, I'm using the Hike Enter pillow. It has a little bit of a foam topper to it. So it adds a little bit of head insulation, has that pad strap. So it's not flying around the tent over the course of the night and is just a nice supportive pillow. For my top insulation, I opted for a quilt system. So I have two quilts here. Whenever I'm in temperatures kind of below minus 10 degrees Celsius, I always bring a synthetic top quilt. 
The reason for that is your body produces a lot of water vapor over the course of the night and you want to move the dew point for that water vapor which is the point where the water condenses into liquid water outside of the down and into an outer layer that's made with synthetic material because the synthetic material is going to handle that moisture a whole lot better. So I just have a thin apex quilt here and then underneath that I have a down quilt. This is actually the Enlightened Equipment Conundrum so it can be either a quilt or a sleeping bag without a hood and this could be a good option for those of you who are a little bit quilt curious. Maybe Maybe you like sleeping bags, but sometimes you want to try out a quilt, especially when the temperatures are a bit warmer. This allows you to zip it up fully, but then also attach it to pad straps in order to use it like a quilt. I always get comments in the wintertime about how quilts are stupid because you get drafts, but I've used quilts in the wintertime tons and including with this system I did not get any drafts last night. I tossed and turned and there is no drafts. You just have to make sure that you're using the pad straps effectively and what's cool about this system that I have from Enlightened Equipment is that they have this quilt layering buckle system. So you have your standard pad straps here then you have this little attachment here that goes onto the pad strap and it has two buckles on it. So you buckle in your first quilt and then you buckle in your second quilt and they both get locked onto the sleeping pad very effectively and allows you to layer quilts really nicely. This top insulation system gets me down to about minus 20 degrees Celsius very comfortably. I'm very warm at those temperatures. I can take it down lower, but I'm gonna start getting cold. Something that you may have noticed is that I don't really have a big buffer in this system because temperatures were forecast to get down to minus 20 and normally I like to have a 10 degree Celsius buffer there. So I'd like to bring a sleep system that would have gotten me down to minus 30. But in order to accommodate for that, I brought a really warm set of down layers. So I have my big down puffy jacket here. I also have down pants. And if I started getting cold, I could have thrown those on and I probably would have gotten down to below minus 30 and still been comfortable in my sleep system. I'd say this was a successful extreme ultralight winter camping trip. I was able to get out to an area that I probably wouldn't have if I wasn't carrying as light of weight and I had a lot of fun doing it. This is a beautiful area. One of the questions that I was curious about is whether there's gear that I would have missed on this trip where I was trying to go as ultralight as possible that I probably would have brought on a winter camping trip where I was going a little bit heavier. And there isn't really a whole lot to be honest. I think maybe my expedition booties, my booties I put on for a round camp, those are awesome to have, especially if you're getting up and going pee in the middle of the night. It really sucks having to put on kind of cold, wet hiking boots. So I probably would have rather had those, as well as having a fleece system is just, just a little bit more comfortable. So having fleece pants, fleece sweater, that would have added another several hundred grams. So I, I think I would have liked those three things. I'm also not convinced that the stove that I have, the Fire Maple Blade 2, is going to work at really low temperatures. This is probably its limit. It was about minus 10 degrees Celsius, maybe a little bit warmer when I was cooking dinner last night. If I was getting down to minus 20, I'd leave that at home and I'd bring something from MSR like the Whisper Light or the Wood Pro. But overall, successful trip. I had a ton of fun. I was able to get to an area that I wouldn't have been able to get to if I was carrying a heavier pack, tested out some awesome gear. That tents are extreme, gonna get it out on some, some more trips before I kind of give you my final thoughts on, on how it compares to the under, other winter pads out there. If you wanna check out my first winter camping video of the year, go check out this video right up here. I showcase a bunch of gear, including that Megalite tent that I talked about, as well as my expedition booties.